Welcome to Tour Tuesday, everybody. Hello. We're back. Hi. And today, <laughs> hello, hello. Um, today we're here to talk about cruising and the return of cruising, and we're so excited. I see um, some familiar faces. I, I'll do some introductions here, um, but of course we have our co my co-host, um, Mr. Pete Borowski. He's here, hey. waving to you. Hey. And we have some tour directors present. I see that we have Howard. Howard Cylinder is Howdy. here. Hi, He's everybody. Waiting. Hello, Howard. <laughs> and I see Bobby Flesher. She is here Hi. as well. Um, and we have two special guests that we'll be introducing uh, very soon. So first, um, I want to I want to welcome you. I'll even. Um, share my screen as we sort of start up here. Um, this is our, I don't know, we've had so many great Tour Tuesdays, I've lost track. I've lost track. This is um, our Cruise Tour Tuesday. And um, I made this beautiful slide about why we should cruise with Star, but I am going to ask Bobby to chime in. And in your own words, Bobby, why do you think that people should cruise with Star? Well, number one, the first thing I have to say is if you love to take a vacation, cruising is by far the best vacation in the entire world. Sorry, Sandy. But <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> I love, love cruising and everybody out there should definitely come cruise with Star. Number one, you get a great tour director. If you do, I've, I've traveled with both Carnival many, many times and NCL many times. And um, anytime you come with Star, you've got a tour director with you who takes care of everything for you. Um, we kind of, uh, if, if there's ever any, any questions, any concerns, we're kind of your go between, uh, between um, you and the, the cruise company and um, we just take care of everything for you. If you've got a question in the middle of the night, if God forbid you get sick, you just call us and we take care of it. So not, not a problem at all. Um, we, we kind of run interference, I guess you could call it. Um, you also, which I see is up there, you get wonderful motor coach transportation from of one of our great pickups in New Jersey or Pennsylvania. We drop you off right at the door of the cruise port. Um, your luggage is taken care of for you. Everything is handled so you don't have a worry in the world. Coming off the ship at Debark, we do the same thing. We try to arrange a group um, debark so that we get off early in the morning before the great majority of the people on the ship and it's always taken care of well. Um, so that's another another good reason. You don't have to pay to park at the pier. You don't have to um, worry about taking an Uber or a, an expensive limousine. So those are things that are important. And also when you travel with a group, you get all kinds of great extras. You get um, either uh, onboard credit, you get a beverage package, you get whatever Star and our wonderful cruise partners are willing to give us. And believe me, it's a lot nicer than traveling by yourself. And when you get on the ship, you already know people. And that's really nice too, so. Perfect. I couldn't have asked for a better explanation. You know, you covered everything, you know, um, you, you, like Bobby said, you have an immediate group of, you know, friends on board that you connect, can connect with. You've got an advocate in your tour director. Um, and we put together great itineraries and, and we pick you up, um, right, you know, right near your home, hopefully in Pennsylvania or New Jersey. Um, and we whisk you right away right to the pier or to the airport, wherever you need to go. So um, those are some key reasons of why you should cruise with Star and we hope you do. Um, the next thing I wanna talk about is what's 
I'm sure on everybody's mind is, you know, what, what to know about the return of cruising. Um, and of course, this is a moving target and, and, and Lucy and Grace are going to talk about this more in general. Um, but I wanna just give a, a brief overview of what's been happening um, because as you all have heard or, or know, um, cruises have not been sailing uh, at least um, from North America um, for over a year. And the CDC had sort of put uh, rules in place and has also designated steps that the cruise lines have to take to be able to start cruising again. So recently, um, the CDC has released guidance for the ships to undertake simulated voyages with volunteer passengers. Wouldn't that be fun to be a volunteer <laughs> passenger? <laughs> me, pick me. Um, and as, as these voyages are going and will continue to go well, they will allow cruise lines to sail with more and more people and to more and more destinations and get back to quote unquote normal, albeit with um, super uh, new procedures to keep us all healthy and safe as best as possible. So, so that's where we are right now. And um, it's exciting. It's an exciting time um, because we're this, this tour Tuesday is perfectly timed to with the restart of, of cruising. So I would like to introduce our first special guest. I would like to introduce Grace Ambrosia, who is Business Development Director for Carnival Cruise Lines. Grace and I have known each other for a long time, um, pre-kids, pre before Grace had kids and when my kids were babies. Um, so, so we've had a long relationship and, and Star and Carnival have had uh, an even longer relationship. And we've been, we've been packaging Carnival Cruises for, I, I believe um, over 15 years. So it's been really exciting and I'm happy to have Grace with us today. So take it away, Grace. Thank you, Sandy. And thanks everyone for joining us this evening. It's my absolute pleasure to be here with you. Um, it's actually so much fun to be here tonight because as Sandy mentioned, the CDC has given some guidance. So we are really anxious and excited to hopefully get back to cruising um, July of 2021 of this year. Um, it's been a long time coming. Um, if you've never cruised before, if you're new to cruise or new to carnival, welcome. Uh, just to tell you a little bit about myself, again, uh, my name is Grace Ambrosia. I'm the Business Development Director for Carnival Cruise Line, and I cover New Jersey. As Sandy said, we've worked together for many years. I actually, I just celebrated my 20th anniversary, so I didn't meet oh. Sandy and her team too long after that. So mm -hmm. it's been quite some time that we've been really wonderful partners together and have had an opportunity to put out some wonderful um, cruise tours. And again, just happy to be here tonight talking about all the fun we have in store for 2021 and 2022 and, and going forward. Um, you know, as I said earlier, we've had a long relationship and all the great things that Bobby highlighted of working with STAR. Um, I could also add that they are, you know, very professional, they're transparent, uh, very down to earth people um, that really wanna give you a great value. And I think we're also a great partner for that as well. So as I said, if those of you that are maybe new to Carnival, we've been around for quite some time. We are actually having a milestone birthday next year in 2022. We'll be celebrating our 50th anniversary. So that's really exciting to be a part of as well. And, and I think with the return to cruise, it's perfect timing. Um, if you don't, if you're not familiar with Carnival, typically we are a very recognized brand that we've been around for quite some time. We're part of the Carnival Corporation, which includes um, many cruise lines that you might be familiar with. Uh, Carnival, obviously, we have Princess Cruise Line, Holland America Line, uh, Seabourn, Cunard, Costa, Aida, and then we also have PO in our UK and PO Australia brands. So there's a lot underneath that Carnival Corp umbrella. Um, you know, for us, we're really Carnival's kind of the leader in the contemporary cruising market. Um, really, what we do is that we create cruises that provide fun and memorable vacations and experiences at a great value. So, 
all you're going to hear a lot about fun on carnival that is really something that we try to incorporate into all of our sailings we're going to highlight a couple for this year um, we do have a really nice common vision for the corporation for all those brands and our highest responsibility and top priority are always to sail safely, protect the environment, and be in compliance everywhere we operate in the world. So we're a, a very giving company. We always try to exceed expectations of all our guests and our crew. Um, so we really um, are excited for you to be here. I'm going to talk a lot about what's going on on the ships. Um, and if you just turn the slide, please. Okay, so now this slide that's a little tricky is this uh, COVID-19 um, guest protocol slide. So we're calling it have fun, be safe. Everything with Carnival is having fun. Um, and I'll preference it before we kind of get into it that this is such a fluid moving target for us. Every day, I feel like there's new changes, new enhancements, as Sandy said earlier, um, the CDC is, has given permission uh, for the simulated cruises. I too would like to be a volunteer, so I'm right there with you, Sandy. Um, but we uh, have these um, procedures and protocols that are designed to really maximize the health and the safety of our guests and crew, obviously are most important, while we deliver um, our fun and memorable vacation experiences. So the what you're seeing below um, that signage here, those five bullet points, are the measures that we have currently planned and they're subject to change until further details are established. So they're gonna be updated in accordance and guidance from pu public health authorities. So just kind of very generalized, um, we're right now we're looking at enha enhanced health screenings prior to embarkation. We're gonna give you some health forms to fill out. Anyone obviously who has any signs or symptoms of COVID-19 or, or any um, symptoms of anything really are going to be asked to go for an additional medical screening prior to us allowing them on board. And again, everything's changing. We'll share more information as soon as possible. And the other benefit of using um, a travel agency like STAR is that you know they're on top of, of what's happening out there in the cruise industry. So they can certainly relay any changes and protocols and procedures that we have in place. Right now we have responsible uh, physical distancing. So it's gonna be marked throughout the ship. Um, face masks right now, um, the CDC is requiring for all forms of transportation. Again, things are changing every day. So as soon as more information is available, we'll share that with you. Um, as you may or may not know, on all of our carnival ships, we've always been um, very uh, keen on having the hand uh, sanitized dispensers all over the ship for entrance areas, um, bathroom areas. We even have like a little tissue on the outside of the, the bathroom so you can you know, not have to hold the door. Um, and then certainly we have safe shoreside experiences. And again, everything is changing. So um, you know, we're, we're definitely looking towards the future and we're anxious to get sailing again. So as things change, we'll definitely share that information with you. Thank you. Perfect. That's a good explanation of what's going on. Now we can talk about uh, the 2021 sailings that we have. We have two sailings um, and Grace is going to spend some time talking about each one. Thanks, Sandy. Yeah, so we have two sailings. So excited to talk about this because the CDC is allowing cruises that are longer than seven days. So we have this great sailing on uh, the Carnival Pride sailing from Baltimore. It's our Eastern Caribbean cruises. And this is gonna be slated to sail October 10th through the 17th, again, of 2021. You could see the rates that are available here, 849 per person and double occupancy. Um, but before we really kind of get into the itinerary of the ship, like just to kind of point out some uh, highlights of the Carnival Pride. So this ship um, was inaugurated in 2002. She's a spirit class ship. So she's a beautiful, sleek, long vessel. She is easy to get around. Literally, you can walk from the forward part of the ship to the after the rear of the ship on many of our decks. 
So it makes it very accessible for um, all our guests on board. We, as I said, the ship was um, inaugurated in 20, I'm sorry, in 2002, um, but we just had a very large uh, refurbishment done to the ship. She was in dry dock and got lots of new bells and whistles. Um, and that was completed at the end of 2019. And, you know, obviously we didn't sail in 2020. So it's, it's basically like walking onto a brand new vessel. But some of the things that you can expect to, uh, to see on the Carnival Pride um, would be a lot of complimentary dining options. We do have some specialty dining, which are nominal charges. Um, there's lots of entertainment and activities and all of that's included in your cruise fare. We have playlist productions, which is um, musical productions that are uh, on board and we have them at various times. We also still have um, a different dining times. So we'll have um, like flexible dining uh, at your time dining that you can dine when and with whom you like table sizes, or you can opt for more traditional dining. Also, what's something that's really great on board the Carnival Pride and actually all of our ships in the fleet is that we have adults only area and we call that Serenity and that's no additional charge. And you have to be 21 or over to go into the Serenity area. They're very large. As I said, they're, they're spacious. They have lots of seating available. There is um, concierge service back there as well. So it's a really beautiful, beautiful area on the Carnival Pride. It's actually at the aft of the ship. So you also have a pool at the Serenity. We also have a retractable roof on the Carnival Pride, which is a great selling point in my opinion, um, especially you know if we're sailing out of Baltimore, maybe the weather's not so fantastic. It's a little overcast or, you know, maybe a little chill in October. We can actually have a retractable roof over our midship pool, which, you know, keeps the party going, all the music's happening, which is all live music. Also, we have another great section of the ship um, called Waterworks, and we do have sports decks available. So lots to see, lots to do on this beautiful, beautiful ship. Sounds amazing. <laughs> yes. Absolutely amazing. So on the itinerary, we're going to talk about three ports of call on this particular sailing. Um, the first would be Grand Turk. Second is Princess Key in the Bahamas. And then third is Freeport in the Bahamas. And you can see the itinerary here. So you depart out of Baltimore. And as Sandy mentioned, the motor coach would actually get you from your pickup point right directly to uh, the port of Baltimore. It's very easy to get to, but it's a big plus to be, have transportation included and everything taken care of you for you. Um, and the itinerary will start out with two fun days at sea and fun days at sea are just that. There's so much going on board. There's lots of activities, lots of entertainment. You can stay busy from morning until night on board with lots of complimentary offerings as well. Um, or perhaps you just want to chill out by the pool and relax, maybe read a book, just catch up with some friends, whatever it is that you want to do, you're going to have two great days at sea to do that. Then we'll go to our first port of call, which is Grand Turk. Um, if you've never been there before, I have to tell you, this is one of my favorite ports of call. It is the destination in itself. We've created this beautiful, beautiful terminal in Grand Turk that gives you an opportunity to literally dock and you can walk off the pier and be in the ocean within 10 minutes. It is right there. It is absolutely spectacular. In addition to that, we also have a beautiful uh, meandering pool with a swim up pool bar. There's the largest margarita bills available. There's lots of entertainment there. You can do flow rider, you can do shopping, um, really so much to do just within the port itself in the terminal in Grand Turk. It is the most beautiful sugar sand beach you've ever seen. And it is one of my favorite destinations. But if you feel like maybe leaving that area, there's lots of excursions, 
Grand Turk is so full of history. It's such a charming destination. There's lots to do. So it's going to be your, your you know, your typical sightseeing. There's going to be museums. Um, there's also like uh, swimming with stingrays or snorkeling or scuba, lots and lots to see and do in Grand Turk. And next we have Princess Key. We have that next slide. There we go. And that's located in the Bahamas. So what's really nice about Princess Key is that it is basically a private resort on the island of Eleuthera in the Bahamas. It is absolutely picturesque, it's perfection. And again, this is a great destination, you know, beach destination if you wanna just chill out, relax, grab a chair, catch some sun, go swimming in the ocean, relax. Um, there's lots to do. So this is a great um, private space for us. As I said, it's, it's like a little private resort. So there's lots of fun. There's lots of amenities available for you. There's a barbecue pit um, that's gonna be ready for lunch when we get into port. You can get a complimentary lunch there. Um, there's a great area for kids. That's a supervised kids area for little ones. So it's kind of in line with our Camp Ocean program on board. Um, and the nice thing, I think one of my favorite things at Princess Key is that there's an adult only retreat area on there as well. So it's more really than just a beach day. There's so much to do. Um, again, swimming, kayaking, sailing. Uh, then if you want to do uh, some more historical, some cultural destinations. You can go see that as well in Princess K with, by taking a shore excursion very close by. It's very, very small destination, um, but it's absolute perfection. And then finally, our port of call number three is Freeport in the Bahamas. Now, again, this is another great destination in the Bahamas. You know, for years, um, Sometimes Freeport would just be that destination where you're like, okay, yes, it's my third one on, on my itinerary. I don't know if I want to get off, but there is so much to see. Freeport has really come a long way. White sand beaches. So again, if you like a beachy destination, um, if you love the ocean, if you just like to chill out, this is a great space. Again, there's a resort, um, a great resort area here in this Grand Bahama Island. There's lots of entertainment. There's a casino on land, but you're also going to have a casino on the ship. There is, um, we say there's barefoot beach bars. Um, it's lots of history. There's uh, trolleys, there's shopping. I think a lot of really great shopping is in Freeport as well. Um, dolphin encounters, lots and lots to see. But the great thing about the cruise is really you can, you know, do everything, be super, super active or be super relaxed. It's your vacation. It's your opportunity to do how and spend it how you'd like to. Okay, so our second itinerary we're going to talk about for 2021 is again sailing on the Carnival Pride. Told you a lot about the Pride, just beautiful vessel. As I said, one of my favorites, very easy to get around. Um, and again, sailing from Baltimore. So that easy, straightforward uh, motor coach ride right down to Baltimore, dropped off, picked up, everything's done for you. So this will be sailing August 22nd through the 29th of this year. Again, we're very excited to have these nice long sailings. And so I have to tell you that Bermuda is, is really become one of my favorite destinations. It is um, everything. If you've never been there, it is absolutely everything you've ever seen about Bermuda with the, the pink sand beaches. It is a beautiful island, but there's rolling green hills. So that's one of the things that I thought was, was so breathtaking about Bermuda was the, the um you know, difference between the blue water, the green trees, the landscape, and it's just so lush and so gorgeous. And that pink beach is are you, nothing like you've ever seen. Um, so what's great about this itinerary, I think, is it really gives you an opportunity to really experience Bermuda. On the other itinerary, it's a little bit more port intensive where we have three different destinations, three ports, um, backed by two fun days at sea on either side. This itinerary is gonna be a little different. 
We're going to depart Baltimore. We're going to have two fun days at sea. So remember, there's so much happening on board and there's so much excitement and so many things that are going to be complimentary for you to enjoy on the Carnival Pride. Then this is the great part. We are three days in Bermuda, in Kings Wharf, Bermuda. So it's actually going to give you two nights and three days. Then we do a fun day at sea back and then we're back in Bermuda. But Bermuda itself, there's so much... Um, history. There's so much culture there. There's great shopping. When you have all this extra time, you can really get on and off the ship as many times as you'd like. Maybe you'd like to go to a local club or go out for dinner or maybe do shopping. Whatever it is, you can come, you can um, leave the ship and get back on the ship. It's basically your hotel while we're there in Bermuda. And the best part about a carnival cruise is really the pack and unpack once. So you're getting multiple uh, vacations really in one trip. And um, as I said, there's lots to do in Baltimore, I'm sorry, Bermuda, whether it's going to be shopping, so much history, there's so much museums, there's lots and lots of history. Um, it's just a beautiful, beautiful destination. I love Bermuda. Love, love, love it. <laughs> oh, and there are some shots. Sorry, I jumped too quick, probably. It's okay. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> um, so I want to point out for both of these cruise packages, um, of course, all your shipboard meals are included. And in some cases, some of the meals off the boat, right, Grace, during, you know, some of the, um, the while we're in port. Mm -hmm. Princess Key. Yeah. Would be like and, barbecue. Yeah, that sounds awesome. Um, and then each of the cruises offers a one hundred dollar per cabin onboard credit. These, this is something that you get when you travel with a group, which is a nice amenity. Um, of course, we'll send a tour director whenever we have fifteen or more passengers, which we hope is for every cruise. We in include the motor coach transportation to and from the local pier or the airport. Uh, baggage handling and related gratuities for the stevedores, the sky caps who, who deliver your luggage. And then um, Carnival offers two elegant dining evenings aboard the ship. Is that is that still um, in place, Grace? Yes, for sailings that are seven days or longer. Got it. Got it. So if you want to book um, these cruises um, for the Caribbean, the, the deposit is $300. Uh, per person at the time of booking. And then your final balance is due on June 22nd. And for Bermuda, because we are kind of getting close, the final payment is due when you book. Um, I just wanna make it clear that um, there will be $13.99 per person per day added to your bill for dining and stateroom services once you get on board. And of course you should always bring layers and, and dress in comfortable clothes. We're casual here um, and make sure that your passport is valid uh, for at least six months beyond the period of your stay. So um, before we jump into 20, 2022, um, Bobby, do you have any um, insight or anything you wanna add, anything we forgot to talk about, about these two wonderful destinations, the Caribbean and Bermuda or Grace, anything you wanna to add to that? Well, if you want my opinion, I, I went to Bermuda on my honeymoon. I've sailed there many, many, many times and nothing is quite as beautiful as Bermuda. Um, and the nice thing about um, when you, you uh, dock at Kings Wharf, there is um, a bus and a ferry that leaves right from there. You can buy a, a three-day pass, you can buy a one-day pass, or you can buy, buy individual trips. It takes you right into town to all the shopping. It takes you to the beaches. In addition, there are um, local buses, which are really great experiences if you wanna do that as well. Um, on the Caribbean cruise, I totally agree with you. Grand Turk is one of my absolute favorite ports as well. And the nice thing is literally the ship is docked right next to the beach. I mean, you walk, you walk off the ship, you walk down into the sand, there are tons of umbrellas, there are tons of palm trees, there are tons of, of um, lounge chairs and tons of people trying to get your money. So don't spend the money on the umbrellas because they're free. So 
<laughs> That's a good tip. This well, is why we love having tour directors because they can give you all of this inside scoop when you travel yeah, with us. Yeah, there are there are people who walk around and say, and for only $25, we can give you this umbrella. Whereas you can get the next one free. So <laughs> yeah, I I would say all the ports are great. The Carnival Pride, I I don't know whether you know, um, is Ken Burns going to be the maitre d' this year? No, I don't believe no. so. He's typically um, our other newer vessel. So hopefully on the Mardi Gras when she gets to sail. Oh, nice. Um, the Pride has always had my very favorite um, maitre d' who sings um, Frank Sinatra every night and is one of the nicest people you ever meet also. But great cruises. Um, two things that I'd like to say about Carnival though. Um, well, one, everybody's gonna ask, I thought we had a hairdryer in our cabin. Look in your top desk drawers, everyone. <laughs> That's where the hairdryer is. <laughs> Makes total sense. Top desk drawer. Okay. Right. Thanks, okay. Bobby. You're right. That's a great, I'm going to add that into my talk. <laughs> you're right. Yeah. So that's the wonderful thing about having a tour director with you, right? To give you all these tips on board. <laughs> and, and don't flush the toilet while you're sitting on it. Oh, <laughs> enough. Really? All right. These are good. These are good. Well, um, that just will segue us into 2022. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, that is a great segue. So looking <laughs> ahead, now that you know all these little tips and tricks, um, but it, you know, it is true. It's nice to, to travel with a nice group, maybe people that are experienced cruisers like Bobby, you know, and she knows her way around, especially our ship. So um, you, you don't get that when you go solo. Uh, it's definitely a benefit. But looking forward, you know, we're very, very positive. As I said, you know, we're kind of, uh, you know, looking at things every day and things are changing, but we do have some really great programming scheduled for 2022. So it's going to be a wonderful year. So hopefully you get to sail this year and next year as well. So just to highlight um, a couple of these sailings, Super excited to have uh, Alaska sailings um, from Seattle, and that'll be on the Carnival Freedom, August 16th through the 23rd, 2022. Again, if you've never done Alaska, it's a really wonderful way to experience it on a cruise ship. I stop at many different uh, ports, give you a little bit of everything, a, a real great taste of Alaska. Um, we have another great Bahamas sailing going out from Baltimore on the Carnival Legend. So we're actually swapping out the Carnival Legend for the, the Legend instead of the Pride for 2022. So it's a very similar style ship. Um, it's, it's of the same class, so very similar layout. So if you're someone who likes to kind of stay on the same type of a sailing, this would be something very similar. And that's July 31st uh, through August 2nd of 2022. Then we have a Bermuda sailing, which I'm super excited, out of New York City on the Carnival Magic. So the Carnival Magic is a very large ship. She'll be coming into port uh, for our seasonal uh, sailings out of New York in 2022. So that sailing will be August 31st through September 5th. Then we have our Canada and New England cruise, again on the Carnival Magic from New York City, and that's September 10th through the 17th. That's a really wonderful itinerary. It's actually one of my favorites. As much as I love to go down to the Caribbean and get the beautiful, you know, warm climates and the beautiful beaches and go swimming and snorkeling, there is nothing like going for a great visit. Um, through New England and Canada. Again, so much history, so much culture. Just, it's such a different experience and it's so wonderful. Our, our port partners up in those destinations really put together wonderful itineraries for us. Then we have Carnival uh, Caribbean Cruises, again, from Baltimore on the Carnival Legend, May 15th through the 22nd. And then again, October 15th through the 23rd. So similar to what we're offering this year. Panama at Panama Canal cruise. Um, so this is going to be exciting again from New York City. So we have lots happening in 2022, right from our area. Um, and if you've yeah. never been to Panama Canal, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. 
No, that's I, okay. I thought you were I'm asking. So, City. Yeah, Bobby just saw that and said, where can I sign up? <laughs> yeah, maybe I'll come too. Um, so that's going to be October 30th through November 13th, 2022. Western Europe cruises. So we typically only do um, European sailings on Carnival. It's very seasonal if we have a new ship or new itineraries. So that's exciting to have it on going to be your favorite ship, Carnival Pride, September 1st through the 11th of 2022. And then we have the Bahamas Beach Bus. So we also sail from uh, Charleston in South Carolina, and that'll be on the Carnival Sunshine. And that's November 3rd of 2022. So lots of excitement looking ahead. And I think that's it for me, right? On my slides. Yeah, I think that is it for you. Um, you know, I thank you so much for that overview. Um, if those folks listening hadn't already, you know, been excited about cruising, I hope that has definitely, you know, um, wet your thirst for, uh, quen you know, I don't know, wet your taste buds for... <laughs> for cruising. Um, we know what you're trying to say. Thank you. <laughs> Maybe I would have figured it out at 10 a.m., but at 6 a.m., it's hard to know what's going to come out of my mouth. Um, but, you know, as I said before, we love cruising with Carnival, um, great partners, and it really is a ship of fun. And that's what we're, that's what we're selling here is we're selling fun and, and, and a great value. Um, before we um, start to talk about NCL, another great partner of ours, does anybody have any questions um, that you want to ask uh, either verbally now, you, you can unmute yourself and ask, or you can put the questions in the chat. We'll get to a couple now and, and save some for later. I, I also want to introduce um, Chris Korkos, um, who's with us today. Chris is our... Um, our, our star travel advisor. Um, she, she's waving. She's waving. There she is with her blue background. Um, she's she takes care of you for all of the cruises and and fly trips. So um, she's here with us today as as a resource if we have any questions. And um, I just want to let you know. So um, there has been a question placed in the chat, which is a great question. Elizabeth has asked, in light of COVID, what has the cruise line put in place regarding the buffets? So um, Grace, do you want to take that? And Lucy, you can talk about it again as well. So again, everything is kind of evolving and changing daily. Um, last that I heard, they were going to be more of a serve buffet. So we would still have the buffet selections, just someone would be serving you probably with um, gloves on, you know, behind the shield, uh, the plastic shield and, and those setups. But as of today, that's, that's what I know. So there, there still will be buffets available, just a serve style. Great. Cause what would a cruise be without a buffet? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, um, and yeah, in fact, some of our other um, partners, our local restaurant partners are doing the same thing. We've got some dinner theaters and they still are offering the buffet. It's just a served buffet. So um, that definitely puts it in a better light for people. Anything different on NCL, Lucy? Hi, actually, it's going to be very similar to what Grace had mentioned Excellent. in regards to um, serving the guest. Great. Yeah. Any other, um, oh, how are they controlling crowds? Um, that's another question. Well, we are definitely practicing social distancing. Um, so that will be in, in the terminal as well as um, on board. Um, so yes, we will continue to social distance. Grace? I believe the same. And again, you know, I, we'll probably have very similar protocols in place, all the cruise lines. So I believe, you know, the same that we're trying There's to- There's gonna be reduced capacity as well mm -hmm. yeah. for our 21 sailings. Good. Yeah, that's a that's a great question. Um, the, the reduced capacity, you know, they'll probably stagger the lines and things like that. Um, but again, it's fluid, it's going to be changing. So, um, so we'll have to keep out for that. And um, Bernadette asks, since I've never cruised before, what do you use the $100 onboard credit for? And I will let Bobby Ooh. answer that. <laughs> <laughs> well, the first thing that I can think of, if nothing else, you can put it toward your gratuities, which are added to your bill. Um, it's $13.99 a day on 
carnival. I assume it's something close to that um, on NCL. I have been cruised on NCL in what, a year and a half, so mm -hmm. I can't tell you. Um, but um, you can always put it towards your gratuities. You can drink to your heart's content and put that on there. You can go to anyone on both Carnival and NCL. You can go to any one of the many, many shops and buy clothing. You can buy a beach cover up. You can buy uh, liquor. You can buy wines. You can buy beautiful jewelry. Um, you can use it toward a port excursion. If there's some something you want to go to, um, one of those port excursions that Grace was talking about, it goes toward that as well. The nice thing is it goes toward whatever the first hundred dollars you spend is. Does that make sense? That wasn't a good sentence, was it? <laughs> <laughs> I think we knew what you meant. <laughs> um, yeah, the first hundred dollars that goes onto your account is taken care of. So it's almost like whatever you spend money on on the ships, the first hundred dollars they're saying it's on us. So it's really nice. Yeah. Great. Um, Lynn mentioned my cruise from Carnival on Magic was canceled in August and Star is cruising that month. Do you mean August last year, Lynn, or August this year. I'm not sure. Chris, do you have any insight on, on that? What, what, oh, she's saying her cruise from, uh, on the magic was canceled. So Carnival did, um, cancel lots and lots of sailings. NCL did too. And, um, in some cases, if we didn't get enough people on the sailing, we had to cancel, but for 2021, we're, pretty much trying to run all the sailings that we can run. So I'm not sure if that answers your question, but um, if the cruise was not canceled, we are still planning to sail. That's our plan. All right, and um, uh, Marie is asking, will we be discussing the Greek cruise tonight? And that's a perfect oh, segue. Yes. <laughs> I would like to introduce our next guest, um, Lucy Rivera is from NCL and we've had the pleasure of working with Lucy for a few years now. And um, it's, uh, she's, she's great. She's very responsive and helpful for us. And we love having NCL as a partner. Our, our travelers love to cruise NCL. Um, of course they love both NCL and Carnival and you'll hear the differences about these two companies um, when, when Lucy starts chatting right away. So um, take it away, Lucy, and I'm going to share my screen. Okay, great. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate all of you for attending this special event. Thank you so much, Star Tours, for being one of our preferred travel partners. We appreciate you. We, we appreciate your support and partnership. Um, I am the regional sales manager for Norwegian Cruise Line. i um, been with Norwegian Cruise Line now for seven years. However, I've been with the travel industry for over 25 years, believe it or not. Um, so why cruise Norwegian Cruise Line? Uh, well, Norwegian Cruise Line has been the premier innovator for 54 years. Uh, we currently have 17 beautiful ships in our fleet, and we created the concept of freestyle cruising in the year 2000, which allows you the freedom and flexibility on board. So imagine cruising just the way you want with no schedule to follow but your own. That is the freedom Norwegian Cruise Line provides on all of our ships and itineraries. So you're going to indulge your taste buds at one of our wide ranging dining options, or perhaps you'll, you'll, you would prefer a dinner and a show combination but you are going to relax at some of the most spacious and modern staterooms in the cruise industry before venturing out to experience the short excursions of your choice. And you'll also enjoy award-winning entertainment throughout your cruise and experience spectacular destinations around the world. Excellent. Um, do you, can you expand a little bit more on freestyle dining and how that's different uh, from maybe your traditional cruise lines? Yeah, so the freestyle dining, there's no fixed dining times. 
Um, there's also, you can dress up, you can dress down. So we have a number of restaurants um, on our ships. So you can select your time, your dinner reservation. Um, you also, with traditional um, cruising with, that doesn't offer free style cruising, you may have a set time for every night and you may have a specific server and table for every night. For Norwegian Cruise Line, it's not, it's not that way. So you can either, um, you know, we have a number of restaurants and whether it's fine dining or casual dining, you have the choice, um, the flexibility to select the restaurant you want, the time. Um, so I can be on, on port just being and then get back on the ship and I could decide at that point okay do I want to really get dressed you know and 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 you know do something as, such as eat in a specialty restaurant or maybe just go um, and do something more casual so I have that choice and I can select my I can make reservations pre-boarding or you can wing it and just certainly once you're on the ship and just pick the time and, and just go right up to the restaurant and see if, if there's a, a table for two and, and they can seat you. So um, it really is just very relaxed um, travel when you're on Norwegian Cruise Line. It, it's really relaxed atmosphere. So, um, but with the itineraries that, that I will discuss, um, you know, obviously it's all about the destinations for the Greek Isles and Hawaii. Obviously, these are two amazing ships. You're going to experience freestyle cruising on both on all of our ships, including those two ships, the, the Norwegian Dawn um, and the Pride of America. Um, but you know, with those two particular itineraries, it really is all about the destination. Great, great. Hopefully, I answer that in regards to freestyle cruising. <laughs> yes, that's great. It, we can, if anybody else has any more questions, we can talk about that again later. But I think it's great for now. Okay, great. So I think we can move forward with the health and safety. Um, so health and safety is our number one priority for all of our guests and crew. Um, as you know, we've always been, um, it's always been our priority and always will. And we will continue to constantly evaluate these protocols as science, technology, and our knowledge of the virus evolves. And we'll provide all the guests with all relevant information, including any changes to protocols prior to setting sail. So we are focusing on three key pillars, um, safety for our guests and crew, safety aboard our ships and safety ashore. So um, yeah, so all guests and crew must be fully vaccinated at least two weeks prior to departure in order to board. And this is for the first phase of our sailing. So guest vaccination requirements are currently for all sailings embarking through October 31st of 2021. And we will follow the science to make determinations on requirements for all other future sailings. Um, in regards to all, you know, the universal testing and pre-embark protocols, we also are indicating that all guests will be required to take the COVID-19 test administered and paid for by the cruise line. So we will pay for it prior to boarding and receive, you know, it's important you receive a negative result and guests are also responsible for complying with all local health and safety requirements, which may include additional testing. As far as the social responsible check-in, um, we are, we've designed an enhanced, an enhanced staggered embarkation process um, and new check-in system to streamline the check-in for guests by allowing documents to be signed electronically as well. Um, we will initially control the guest capacity on board each ship to provide each even more space per guest. And we've also increased spacing in dining and entertainment venues and on and other onboard um, spaces. Cause I know that was a question in regards to um, the crowds and, and so on and so forth. As far as the contactless food, there will be contactless, contactless food and beverage service will be provided across all the ships with service staff stations shipwide, including all the restaurants and the lounges. We will continue, and we've always done this with the hand sanitation, all guests. If you've been on Norwegian um, Cruise Line, I'm sure you've heard the washi washi. <laughs> all guests will be required to engage in frequent hand washing and hand sanitizers will be prominently placed and easily accessible throughout the ship. Um, also, we will have a dedicated 
public health officer on board that will, over, that will oversee the day-to-day -day sanitation and cleanliness of all public areas and accommodations. Um, and then, you know, in regards, I think this is the one question that I've been getting in regards to beyond the port. So guests are free to explore ports of call on their own according to protocols in each specific port and can purchase shore excursions as they wish. So face coverings may be required in certain settings to comply with local requirements. Um, for example, in terminals for embarkation and disembarkation or at ports of call. But as you know, we will continue to monitor public health guidance at, including from the CDC at the time of your voyage and modify requirements accordingly. Excellent. Okay. Ooh. Wetting my appetite here for these 2021 <laughs> sailing, some some good ones here. Yeah, so we have this amazing Greek Isles cruise um, departing October 9th through the 17th of 2021. Um, I've sailed um, the Greek Isles. Um, it was on a different ship, Norwegian Star, and it was truly a magnificent itinerary. So I, I would do it again over and over. It is a bucket list destination, is one of my favorite destinations. Um, and it is a bucket list for many. Um, you know, you can take a gondola ride down man-made waterways in Venice before departing on your cruise to Greece with Norwegian Cruise Line. And we are um, NCLs, your, it is the European's leading cruise line. Um, so we have been awarded 13 years in a row by World Travel Awards for this particular um, itinerary. So let's start with Cator Montenegro. I think we can lead right into the ports. So Kator, um, known as port of call number one, um, Kator known as Katero is a little fairy tale place tucked away in heart of Southern Europe. This is the most beautiful and best preserved town in Montenegro. And today as a 17th century, Kator embodies the magical spirit of the Venetian empire, which ruled over Kator for nearly 400 years. So this is one of the rare places in the world where the past and present merge in the perfect union. So we do offer 12 unique shore excursions for Couture. Um, they range in pricing from $65 to $199 per adult. But um, just keep in mind that we do have um, some unique shore excursions for you in Couture. For port of call number two, Kerfu, Greece, Kerfu is known as Greece's Emerald Island um, because the Kerfu is one of the greenest islands in Greece. There are more than 2 million olive trees on the island of Kerfu, adding to its lushness and the food tables. And we do offer, again, 10 mm -hmm. shore excursions as well in Kerfu. As far as Santorini, which is one of my favorite, oh my gosh, it's one of my favorites. Um, I have some amazing pictures um, of, of, of Santorini. And, you know, when you see the photos of the whitewashed villages and, and it is exactly that way. Santorini is arguably the most famous of the Greek islands. It's instantly recognizable for its whitewash, cube shaped buildings adorned with blue accents and steep cliffs and tangerine sunsets that light up the sky and sea. So Santorini, again, we depart at 10 p.m. And the reason why we do that is so that you can experience the beautiful sunset. And you have to have to take photos of it. Um, I recommend it. So um, the beautiful sunset is in the northern village of Ia, which is undoubtedly the most popular place to watch the sunset in Santorini. As far as Mykonos, Mykonos is also one of my favorites. It's a classic Greek island with whitewashed houses as well. And Mykonos is home to lots of Greek and European restaurants, but it's perhaps most famous for its Medi Mediterranean cuisine, fresh seafood and mess dining culture. Um, I, I truly, truly recommend it. And again, it's just one of my favorite favorites and I, I recommend for you to, to do this particular itinerary. Argostoli. Um, also looking at picturesque Argostoli, you wouldn't know it suffered, it actually suffered a devastating um, earthquake in 1953. Um, and so the city is surrounded by full of treasures, including the 12th century mezzanine 
cathedral and beautiful 16th century frescoes. In, and, and the nearby underground lake of Melisani is simply magical. Um, you enter the caves to find ancient and marvel at the scar of rays of light beaming through turning the water and intense blue. Now this is the this is one I haven't experienced, um, but it look it sounds amazing. And as I was reading it, um, it really is a, a port of call that I'm very interested in in uh, experiencing. And we do offer four excursions um, for Agrostoli. In addition, um, I want to mention about Mykonos. We offer seven excursions as well. So with Dubrovnik. Dubrovnik, um, Croatia is the number six port and no visit to Dubrovnik would be complete without a walk around the spectacular city walls, the finest in the world and the city's main claim to fame. From the top, the view over the old town and the shimmering Adriatic is sublime. So we do offer 18 shore excursions for, for Dubrovnik. Um, and for those Game of Thrones fans, you're certainly going to enjoy the shore wrecks that you can explore King's Landing as well. So um, I have some great photos um, in Dubrovnik. So after, um, with Norwegian Dawn, you'll be sailing on the beautiful Norwegian Dawn. And, and just keep in mind that, you know, the Dawn has been renovated, um, but, you know, with this particular itinerary, it's all about the destination. So we have done ex some extensive upgrades ranging from our existing spaces as well as um, our, our accommodations. We also added um, Los Lobos, which is an authentic Mexican cantina restaurant. We also have the Oceans Neighborhood Bar and Grill, which is a 24 hour restaurant serving up sports highlights. Um, we also have added on um, the Mana Michael Mandavi Family Wine Bar. And of course, our Sugar Cane Mojito Bar that we have um, on Norwegian Dawn, one of my favorites. So you are going to enjoy the ultimate freedom and flexibility on Norwegian Dawn. Um, you will, you know, we're offering a wide range of spacious accommodations. Um, there are staterooms to fit every budget. And the capacity for Norwegian Dawn is 2340. So now let's <laughs> talk about Hawaii. Ooh, so Hawaii, I have also done this itinerary. It is one of my favorites. It is another bucket list destination for many. Um, and I could do it over and over and over. Um, Hawaii, um, we voted best Hawaii itinerary for 15 years by Porthole Cruise Magazine. So you can feel free to let the gentle breezes of Waikiki stir up aloha spirit as you set out to explore the Hawaiian Islands. With Norwegian, you'll soak up, soak up the vibes as you sink your toes in a black sand beach before you trek to the top of Hakiakala. Um, you will enjoy the Maui's massive volcano. And when the sun sets, you'll get ready for unfor forgettable scar unforgettable stargazing well past midnight because you'll have plenty of time to explore the culture, the sights, and local flavor of five unique ports, including Oahu, Maui, Hilo, Kona, and Kauai. So the top reasons to cruise Hawaii with Norwegian Cruise Line would be the fact that you're visiting four islands and five ports in seven days. No inner island flights, so you unpack once. We cruise all year round from Oahu. There's no passport needed. You have two wonderful overnights in Maui and Kauai. There's pleasant temperatures all year round, and we offer a total of 140 shore excursions. So let's start with Port of Call, Honolulu. Um, it's actually, Oahu is your embark port. So you will embark the ship in Oahu departing at 7 p.m. Oahu is known as the gathering place. The island of Oahu is the third largest island of the Hawaiian chain. So it certainly lives up to the nickname since majority of Hawaii's population resides in Oahu and the island is visited by travelers from around the world. You're going to experience Waikiki, which is the iconic beach. Um, you'll experience the dining and nightlife in Waikiki. And west of Honolulu is Pearl Harbor, site of the World War II's 1941 bombing attack and home to the USS Arizona Memorial. So 
Port of Call to Maui. Uh, Maui is known as the Valley Isle. It's the second largest Hawaiian island, the island beloved for its world famous beaches. Um, I, I've, say, I've done the, um, the road to Hana, which is one of the popular uh, attractions that you wanna do when you're in Maui. Um, the island beloved for its world famous beaches, a sacred Iowa Valley views of migrating humpback whales, which the humpback whales is usually during the winter months. So you can always come back and, and do that in the winter. But um, there's also farm to table cuisine and the magnificent sunrise and sunset from Hakiakala, which you will explore. And, and just know that you will explore an overnight in Maui, which is wonderful. You will experience an overnight in Maui, which is nice. Also the port of call um, Hilo, so Hilo is a town on Hawaii, um, commonly called the Big Island. So this is the Big Island in the state of Hawaii. So it's known for the River State Park featuring Rainbow Falls with its colorful mist effects. Um, we also have the bubbling basalt lava rock pools known as the boiling pots. And to the south is Hawaii's Volcanoes National Park, home to famed rainforests and the active Kalua and Mona Loa volcanoes. So, Again, those are just 30 miles away. And then we have Kona. Um, Kona often referred, Kalua Kona, often referred to as Kona by the locals, is a sunny seaside town located in the heart of the Kona district on the western coast of the Big Island. So the weather on the side of the island is almost always dry and sunny and there are many white sand beaches that are perfect for sunbathing, snorkeling and swimming all easy to reach from Kona. And you can't leave Kona before sampling the distinctive flavors of 100% Kona coffee, which is what Kona is famous for, right? Oh, and you also have to have a Mai Tai as well before it's a drink. You don't have to tell me twice. It's a very strong <laughs> cocktail. <laughs> <laughs> then we have Kauai. Kauai, um, you know, you'll experience an overnight in Kauai. Kauai, in a way, is set apart. It's also the greenest of all the Hawaiian islands. And 97% of it is covered by forests or mountain ranges. It has the most dramatic landscape and it's 4,000 foot high Nepali cliffs. And it has the biggest gorge in the Pacific, the 10 mile long and 3,000 foot deep Wamea Canyon. Um, and during the sailing, which is on a Friday, we sail past the Nepali coast in the afternoon and we do a half hour narration of Nepali coast. So as you know, Nepali coast um, is a state wilderness and it, it's, um, it's a park, it's a state wilderness park, it's a national park and it lies in the Northwest of Kauai Island. And it's known for its towering Pali or sea cliffs punctuated by narrow valleys, streams and cascading waterfalls. So it's very, very beautiful. So we're going <clears throat> just to talk, <clears throat> discuss a little bit about the Pride of America. Um, again, you are going to enjoy all the amenities um, on the Pride. You're going to experience no fixed dining times. You can dress up, you can dress down. You have the choices of, of many restaurants. Um, and it is a U.S. flag ship. I think people tend to forget, or they may not know, that it is a U.S. flag ship. Um, so we sail year round from Honolulu. So we're giving you that freedom and flexibility to vacation on your own schedule. And you know, you're going to island hop, um, Hawaiian style with a wide variety of restaurants, bars and lounges, excellent accommodations, spacious um, accommodations, and you'll enjoy a variety of entertainment. And again, Pride of America, the capacity is 2,186 and it has been remodeled. Um, it was remodeled in 2016. Excellent, excellent. Thank you so much, Lucy. You're um, just, to, <laughs> just to round out some information about both of these cruises, um, both cruise packages include all shipboard meals. Again, the services of a star tour director with 15 or more passengers, um, round trip airfare to and from Newark, the motor coach transportation to and from the local airport and your departure location of choice, airport transfers upon uh, arrival and departure, and, um, and baggage handling to make your life super easy. 
Um, if you pick the Greek Isles, um, everybody, bless you, Pete, bless you. <laughs> everybody, um, each cabin will receive the ultimate beverage package, uh, the specialty dining package, and a $100 onboard credit per cabin. Um, so that's a lot, a lot you get um, on this cruise. And in addition, if you book a balcony or ocean view, you will also receive a $50 shore excursion credit and the internet package. So Again, you can't get this if you don't travel with a group. So this is something that um, is nice uh, that everybody gets. Uh, that's a part of our group. And for Hawaii, um, uh, the uh, first two guests get the beverage package and a $100 onboard credit per cabin. So um, also two, uh, two great things, um, uh, amenities for the Hawaii. Um, the Hawaii cruise. A, a $300 deposit is due at the time of booking to sec secure a cabin. Um, the final payment for Greece is due June 28th, and the final payment for Hawaii is due July 11th. A fixed service charge of somewhere around $16 per person per day will be charged to your onboard account. You can use your onboard credit to pay for that if you'd like. And as Lucy said, it's freestyle attire resort casual when you cruise on NCL. You can bring formal attire, but it's optional. And don't forget your passport must be valid for at least six months beyond the period of your stay. Um, and before we jump into 2022, I will open it up to Lucy um, for questions. There, there was a question from Gail, is there an option to upgrade the cabin? Um, there's always an option to upgrade your cabin when you book with STAR. We will give you the price, the prices of, of all the cabins that we've held, and you can select your cabin. So um, the price that we show is for an inside cabin, but you do have the option to upgrade your cabin. Obviously, it would cost a little bit more, um, depending on if you want an ocean view or a balcony. Those are the three tiers of cabins. Inside cabin, ocean view, which has uh, windows, and a balcony, which actually has uh, a step out balcony. So those are, um, those are the different levels of cabins. Any questions specifically about NCL before we move on? We'll come back to your question, Bernadette, in a little bit. I have a NCL's entertainment for those who've never traveled NCL, as far as I'm concerned, it's the best entertainment at sea. Excellent entertainment. Thank you. <laughs> Can you I tell us about the entertainment, Bobby or Lucy? Um, you know, what can we expect? Well, for the Pride of America and Norwegian Dawn, they offer a variety, we offer a variety of entertainment. So um, you know, every, there's a freestyle daily that the guests will receive in their cabin. And in that freestyle daily, they have activities from morning till night. So with um, the Dawn and the Pride of America, we offer everything from um, comedy to, um, they'll have in the theater, either comedy or some variety of shows, whether it's some Broadway shows. We have the bigger Broadway shows on the other ships, um, but for these particular um, ships, and you don't have to make reservations for the entertainment. You can just walk up and just enjoy the show again. And it's just a variety of different shows on these particular ships. So it can be everything from comedy, from maybe karaoke or, um, oh gosh, it's just a, a, a really a variety of, of different singing, dancing. Yes, I mean, we have some dancing, singing, you know, a little bit of that, you know. Um, so, and, and again, they're throughout the, the week. So you can enjoy maybe, um, if you missed an early seating, you can go to the late seating. So there's a flexibility where if you decide that um, you wanna go later, you can. Um, we also show the entertainment multiple times throughout the week as well. So that's always nice. Great, excellent. At this time, does Greece have any quarantine requirements? I don't know if you guys know, of course, she's, Marie is asking about today in June. Um, do you know if Greece has any quarantine requirements? 
Um, at this point, um, I am not aware of any quarantine for, for Greece. I yeah. believe that they are open. Um, but I, I would definitely suggest to um, check online and, and maybe they can check with you, um, Sandy. To see yeah, I believe they are I, with I the believe protocols. The same thing that you thought is I do believe that Greece is open mm -hmm. right now with no quarantine requirements. But again, um, I mean, that's good news that um, it shouldn't hopefully go backwards before the fall. Um, so we should be in good shape into the fall. Let's um, pop over and look at our 2022 sailing with NCL. Okay. So we have the Baltic cruise. Um, this is the nine day sail from Copenhagen, Copenhagen aboard the Norwegian getaway, which is a beautiful ship offering lots and lots of amenities, onboard activities and amazing shows as well. Um, so with the Baltic, the capital of Denmark, Copenhagen is filled with canals, cobbled, cobbled squares and copper spires. But don't let the historic appearance fool you. There's also um, Scandinavia's most cosmopolitan city. Certainly you can re relive medieval times in the Latin Quarter, but you can also enjoy some of the Europe's finest shopping, museums, cafes, nightlife prior to your cruise around the Baltics. Um, of course, you'll also set sail for an exciting vacation steeped in history, art and culture, travel through Tallinn's old town within the medieval city walls among watchtowers, graceful spires, and um, winding cobblestone streets from St. Petersburg, head to Pushkin to visit the Tsar's village, ranked one of the masterpieces of the art world. Um, and also during your walking tour of Helsinki, begin from Senate Square and visit many of the city attractions, so including the world famous rock church built of bedrock and quarried stone. Um, and indulge on the getaway, any craving up to 16 delicious dining options. Um, it was remodeled in 2019. So you'll certainly experience the freedom and flexibility on board, the world-class entertainment and the beautiful accommodations. And we do offer, just to mention, we offer 79 shore excursions for this particular itinerary. That's a lot. That's a lot of choices. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it sounds amazing. It sounds amazing. Thank you for that. Yes. Uh, let's see here. I was on it two years ago. It is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, actually, I am going to go back to sharing my screen. Um, you'll see a picture of a person who you may recognize. Um, <laughs> she's on this call today. Um, Chris is your travel advisor. She's going to help you. So when you are ready to book your trip, um, take a quick picture of her phone number um, or write it down. This is her direct line that goes right to her desk. Um, so she's, she's uh, ready and willing to help you book your trip. And uh, I want to talk about travel insurance. Um, while we all saw that what happened in the last, you know, year and a half, highly recommend travel insurance. Um, Travel and travel protection of any kind, um, we recommend through the National Tour Association's NTA travel protection plan that's administered by Aon Affinity. Um, highly recommend this company. In fact, I want to tell you um, when we had to cancel all of the cruises last year, um, every single person got their money back for their travel insurance. So um, it, they were a very, very good company to work with work with. Um, I continue to recommend them because I feel personally um, comfortable referring them to you and um, the URL. You, you go ahead and buy the insurance on your own. That's not something that we do for you. You can choose to buy it from Aon Affinity or any other company. Um, if you use Aon Affinity, make sure you tell them STARS tour operator location um, and you purchase the plan within 14 days of deposit, um, depositing on your cruise to cover pre-existing conditions. So um, highly recommend uh, tour protection. 
Um, and now it's time to open up for more questions. Um, the questions could be for, for Bobby, for Lucy, for Grace regarding NCL or Carnival. Um, you can either raise your hand electronically, you can ask the questions in chat, you can raise your hand in person and, and we will call on you and you can unmute yourself. This is, this is your chance. We've got experts in the room, everyone. And please um, turn on your video. We'd love to see your faces especially because we'll be announcing a winner of our um, gift card and we want to see your face if you win. <laughs> um, we, uh, let's see. Oh, a question in the chat. On the Carnival Elegant Nights, do they require formal wear? Grace, you want to take that one? Sure. Um, we don't really call it formal nights anymore. We call them cruise elegant. So um, it's really up to you and that can vary to what elegant, you know, you'll see some guests wearing tuxedos and gowns and then you'll see some guests, you know, some females dressed in like very nice dressy pantsuits and dresses and cocktail dresses. So it kind of varies. So cruise elegant, um, we'll call it maybe twice per sailing on a longer sailing, seven days or longer. That would be for more for the, the, the formal dining, the main dining room for dining in there. Um, obviously this is your vacation. We want you to be comfortable. We want you to dress how you'd like to dress. So you can also dress, of course, cruise casually. There's lots of different alternatives for dining as well. So really that's, that really just kind of pertains to, um, the main dining room. There's so many options. And again, it's your vacation. So if you just want to be in your bathing suit, out by the pool, having a margarita, eating some great tacos, whatever you want, it's really, it's your vacation, but um, it's not as formal as it once was. And as I said, we kind of cruise elegant, you'll see a little bit of everything for Deptford. For Anything goes these days, right? Yeah. I mean, we try to keep it a little, you know, more on the dressier side for those nights, but you know, not everybody has a tuxedo and sometimes people want to wear a tuxedo. Or, or heels. Or heels. heels. <laughs> what are those? <laughs> what are those? Exactly. I um, have a thing to say about men. Make sure you bring one pair of long pants because they won't let men in the dining room with shorts on. Very true. Thank you, Bobby. <laughs> this, is the same, this is the same for our restaurants too with our specialty restaurants some of our specialty restaurants also they have certain dress codes in regards to the slacks for, mm -hmm. for the men but I, I wanted to add one thing um in regards to the onboard credit okay so um and bobby mentioned about the ovc being used towards gratuities um only Onboard credit that's purchased as an amenity can be used to pay for service charges. This is for Norwegian Cruise Line. Okay, really? so um, if it's a promotion driven, such as this is part of the, 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 the group cruise, right? So the onboard credit may be used for all purchases except towards onboard service charges, pre-purchase activities and foreign exchange transactions. Um, so I just wanna, just want thank to you for that. that for you guys. Okay. Yep. That's a good clarification. And thank you for that. So um, just so everybody understands that hundred dollars, um, you'll have to be forced to buy something and <laughs> have a good time with it. So um, which is, I'm sure you guys will be spending a hundred dollars on the cruise. So it's still a good value. Um, Mark is asking, please explain more about virus testing, swimming restrictions, or onboard medical care. Understanding, Mark, that we're, you know, we're, things are still fluid and, and we are in the, uh, the testing phase of the return to cruising. So I'm not sure how much detail that Grace and Lucy will be able to answer, but um, do, you, do you ladies have any insight on um, virus testing or swimming restrictions or the onboard medical care? We don't have any swimming restrictions that we know of. And um, in regards to the COVID testing, um, that is going to be required a negative, res a ne a, a negative test, and we're uh, taking care of that. Um, is that before the cruise or? Yes. Or yeah, before and after. And there will be, and, and then everyone has to be fully vaccinated two weeks prior. And this is for the first days of our sailing, so October 31st of 21. 
Got it. They change after October 31st. As you know, things are changing by the day. Yeah. And just to point out the, the Hawaii sailing leaves departs on November 6th. So, um, so keep that in mind, you know, they haven't announced the next set of parameters or, or guidelines post October 31st. Um, so we did change the Hawaii sailing date to November 6th um, at this point. So no swimming restrictions, onboard medical care, I assume is going to be, you know, ramped up if, if anything, but I know um, one of you mentioned that there is a, a person on board purely. Yes, we have a dedicated, dedicated health officer on all of our ships. Um, and all of our ships, we have our, our medical clinics um, and we've, you know, enhanced the staffing. We've increased the staffing. Um, there'll be, um, so I'm just reading because there's so much to be uh, you know, up to date. And all this information um, is actually on the ncl.com website, Sail Safe. So all everyone who, who's on this um, meeting can certainly, if they have any doubts or any questions, they can go onto that website and read the, the protocols listed there as well. But yes, we will have enhanced onboard medical teams and health services on all of our ships. Great. Any insight there um, from Carnival, Grace? As of right now, we haven't really, we have not updated protocols for um, the sailings that we have with the exception of our Alaska itineraries. That's the only ones that we put any protocols out right now, um, which we don't have with, with any groups right now for 2021. Um, but again, for us, we're, everything's changing daily and similar to Norwegian Cruise Line, you could check uh, carnival.com we have all the health advisories and obviously booking with star you can also give this information out to your clients once we get everything um, we're still evaluating so it's you're going to keep hearing it it's a fluid situation that's changing daily so absolutely you. yes Please put the link for ncl sale safe program in the chat um, but again it's you know these words fluid pivot uh, um, it's, it's constantly changing. So what we tell you today could certainly be different. Um, you know, it's, it's the same for traveling by bus, you know, right now we're, we're requiring masks and, uh, through September, um, because that's, you know, the federal mandate, but what happens after that? I, I don't know, but certainly people are booking bus trips, you know, after October 1st. Um, so the good news is, the, you know, we're moving, we're all moving in the right direction. You know, the country is getting their vaccinations. Um, we're doing great. And, and the cases of COVID have, have gone down dramatically. And that's going to help us return to cruising and return to travel in general. Um, Vanetta wants to know what's the weather like in Greece during October? Um, I'm seeing right now 73 in October. <laughs> The average temperature sounds perfect. <laughs> very comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'll take two more questions before we announce our gift card winner, or maybe not. You can <laughs> answer. Uh, yeah, everybody wants to get to the gift card. Any questions? All right. Before I get to the gift card, um, I want to, of course. Um, promote our next Tour Tuesday, which is uh, Tuesday, June 15th. And I invite you all to join us. We will be talking about our Thunder Bay, Michigan resort vacation. So Thunder Bay is this fabulous resort in Michigan and they have this excellent excursion to um, see elk and have a special meal with the owners and um, take a horse-drawn carriage ride. It's amazing. It's a really special uh, trip that we offer. And we'll also be um, talking about the Rochester, New York Senior Tours reunion, and we will have special guests, Bob and Susan Holt, joining us. So join us in two weeks at 6 p.m. for that. Um, Let's see. Uh, Carol Smith. Yep, Carol has a quick question about next year's cruises. She signed up for the Panama Canal cruise on Carnival. Will we be doing Zoom again next year? What's, well, it's fluid, Carol. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
Uh, I'd like to think so. If you guys keep showing up, I'll keep doing it. How about that? So let's do it. I'm in. (laughs) All right. Thank you. (laughs) I'd like to think that we're going to keep doing it. Oh, and this is great. Carol, I I didn't even prompt her to say this. She went on the Thunder Bay trip. Awesome. (laughs) So um, that, so that is, you know, you're hearing it right from somebody who went on that trip. So Let's um, announce our gift card winner. Pete, will you please pass me the winning name? And the winning name is Pam Walling. Pam, uh, I see Pam. Yeah. Oh my goodness. (laughs) (laughs) All right, Pam, you have won a $25 star gift card. And we will be in touch and figure out where you can use it if you want to book a new trip or you've already have something booked. Um, but congratulations. Well, thank you very much. I'm still trying to decide what I want to do. There's too many things to do. <laughs> well, now you can spend uh, $25 less on, on your trip because we've, we've kicked in for you. Right. Um, I want to thank my special guests, uh, Grace Ambrosia and Lucy Rivera from Carnival Cruise Lines and Norwegian Cruise Lines for joining us. I want to thank Bobby Flesher, our tour director extraordinaire for helping out tonight. Chris Korkos for joining us. Um, Howard, who, who's on the call as well. I see tour director Jean. Um, and thank all of our travelers or hopeful travelers for attending. I hope you learned a lot. And I look forward to joining you uh, in two weeks for our next Tour Tuesday and seeing you on a, on a cruise really soon. So thanks again, everybody, and have a great night. Thank you. Thank Have you. Bye, everybody. Bye. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Thank you. Thank Bye. you.